Hi, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and today I'm in the studio. But what I'm going to talk about is building a tomato support or cage, which is really a form of the obelisk that I have on my website. And I'm building an obelisk for a support because it's just prettier. And most of the tomato cages I've seen, they're not tall enough for my heirloom tomatoes. My heirloom tomatoes can get seven, eight feet tall, and most tomato supports are like at four feet. And so it just did, made better sense for me to build my own. Plus it's very inexpensive. I use inexpensive materials. And even though most people would say they don't last outside in the elements, mine have. I have one I built back in 2013 and it's still going strong. I just noticed a little bit of rot on the feet where I let it sit on the dirt and I didn't have like treated lumber on the bottom. But most of the time I have no issue and it's the way I either set it up in the garden or how I've treated the wood at the bottom. So that being said, let's get to building our tomato cage obelisk or whatever you want to put on it. You can put roses, you can put sweet peas, you can put whatever. It's just very pretty in the garden. So also don't forget, there's a plant, will be plan and description, photos, everything on the website at uh, flowerpatchfarmhouse.com. Um, probably printable, if I didn't say that already. I might have. Anyways, so that's that. So let's get to building the obelisk. This is for tomato support, so I wanted it long, eight foot long, and the first, the, what I did, I, I'm building it on an eight foot table. This is not quite a full eight feet once I measured it, but it'll do the job. Now we started from the edges and measured in to find center line of the table. I wanted the base of my um, obelisk to be 16 inches wide on the outside edge. So we went from center line and measured out eight and a quarter on each side and made a mark. Then we placed the blocks here so that we could line up the two by twos here. We did the same on the other end except the measurements are six inches wide at the top therefore we only went out three inches on each side. I don't have blocks going up there but we did clamp it down and I will show you that. We clamped it down with a clamp up there. So that's how that's working there to keep it steady in one spot and not move because it will move when you go to measure for your rungs which is I'm this is I'm building it like a ladder so I'm going to call them rungs um, you can easily move these out of place if you don't have them secured to your flat surface so these are one by twos pine I may have told you that already but to find the width I wanted to start six inches up from the bottom. That was my personal preference. You can do whatever you want, but because these are squared off, I do not have any angle cuts in this to make it super easy for everybody. Then um, I need to measure across from the top of the piece of wood, because you notice the bottom, if you get real, let me get really close for you. just for this one shot, the sun's coming out, so it's gonna create shadows, but I can do this. So you notice here, I have the line here, and these are however wide they are, measure them. So I'm gonna put it on there, on the lines on the bottom where I wanted it to come up from. And I measured across, this one is 16 and a half inches. I See right there, the top is going to meet just about the sides of here, but the bottom is in a little bit. And that's because this is squared and this is angled. I did not want to do a bunch of angle cuts. I'm not that precise and it works just fine doing straight, it's faster, easier, etc. So I did on it each of the, uh, for each of the rungs, I div divided the spaces. So if I was going to have five rungs, I was going to have four spaces. So I measured from the top to the bottom rung, not to the feet, to the bottom rung, and divided it by four. And that way I got the, 
spaces between. So they're relatively even. I don't care if they're perfectly even. And I wrote down what they were from each other. They were 22 and a half between slats. I, and I pulled from the top. So I was pulled down 22 and a half from the top rung and made my lines. And then the second rung and etc. So that's how I spaced mine. Like I said, this, you could make your own, space them however you want. You could do even more rungs, and you just would divide by how many spaces you're going to have uh, from the, the length. So that's basically how I did that. Hopefully it made sense. I'm not a mathematician or an engineer, so I just figure out things as I go. And so that's how I measured and cut each one of these. I will have the dimensions on the blog post of each one of the rungs, the dimensions of the width, etc. All of that will be on the website. So you can, I'll probably even have a printable that you can download. Anyways, that being said, that's how I laid it out. It's how you can lay it out. Now let's get to our nailing, gluing and nailing. So let's start at the top because the sun's starting to glare on this end. Now, I'm not gonna do the very top because it's what's being held in place by that clamp. I will go ahead and check my measurements since it's been out here and make sure everything is where I really want it. And let's see. So that is actually six and three quarters. So that's fine instead of just six. So I'm going to go down to this one, this rung. I have it at, this is eight and three quarters. Take notes of everything you do because that's where I'm going to go to the notes because these are going to be attached on here. So how I'm going to attach it, and this is where my nailing pattern is going to come in handy for you. I want to get these relatively straight so when you're looking at it, it's not going to be a big wonky looking thing. I'm trying to open my glue bottle and it's not wanting to come open. So here we go. I should double check that everything is lining up like it should. All right, looks like it. All right. Aha, there it went. So I'm going to put a dab of glue on each one where it's going to go. And then I'm going to put this on here. Maybe I should go on the other side and do this so that I'm not getting in the way of the camera. Here, let me get it a little bit better for you. My neighbor's putting up a huge pergola behind his house out there. It's going to be beautiful, but he's out there sanding and sawing. So if you hear him, just know it's for a good cause. Okay, so let me get here, over here, so you can see this one. This, I'm going to do a triangle pattern for nailing. So I'm going to put one, I better hold on to this good. That end, that end, this moved, so I'm going to move it back. There, I'm just going to do it so it holds it in place rather than pulling. And then I'm going to do one here in the center where it'll attach to the other side of the um, two by two. Now I'm going to get a close up of this for you so you can see it. So dab of glue, and then I do three nails on each one, or brads. This is a brad nailer. Now let me zoom down in on you, that for you. Since my screen is so teeny tiny, I can't see if you see it. You probably can. So here's how I nailed. One, two, three. So it makes a triangle pattern. So that'll prevent this from ratcheting. If they kind of pull up, the glue will help to keep it secure. And this should work fine. My other one I screwed, and I only had put like one or two screws in, and it started to ratchet. And then I saw some video somewhere where some guy was showing how you do it in the triangle pattern. It will not ratchet. So that's just a clue. So now I'm going to go down to the next one.
right here. Now it's going to come up a little bit so it's squared off because these are at an angle. And if I want to do a top plate, I would attach it to these. So I'm making sure the top edges match or come up a little bit above those. There. And there's the top plate. Good enough. I eyeballed it. And there is, let me go down the length of it, pull up, there is our first ladder. So now I'm going to take the measurements so I can build my next one and or I will just flip this over and use it as a pattern. So I'll show you. Pull this out. It's not snug in there. Flip it over. Go. Oh. Slide it up till it fits. And I will then lay the next set of two by twos on top of this and then match those. And then I'll just measure that off. Oh, I'll just show you. One moment, let me go get my other two by twos and we'll get to it. Sun's coming up so or over the trees, so it's creating some shadows here, but you're gonna get the gist of it. So here's my new two by twos or this for the second section. You notice this one's kind of yucky looking there. Not a big deal. I'll just put it where this is flat here. This is all gonna get covered by tomatoes, plants, vines, whatever it is you're gonna have grow on this thing. So those little imperfections don't bother me. And so I'm just gonna line this up as best I can on this one. Now, what can happen is you can see is this one has a bow in it. So I'm just gonna match the ends as best as I can. I'm assuming they're the same height. And that's close enough. And then I'm going to have to take measurements or when I make this cross piece, I'm going to attach the two end pieces. And then I'll come back to attach this one and I will pull this wood out word. If I pull it out now, it's just going to move, but I would make it where it would line up with this one. And that's easily done because this is, you know, pliable, meaning it, it'll, it'll move. Now I had showed you how the sides of this was bowing. So I've already attached the top rung cross piece, and now I'm going to attach the bottom and then I can even it out as I go from each end. And what I mean, even it out, even the two, even up the two by four, that is um, bowing. Oh, I closed it. One moment, I'm just putting up my squirt of glue. Now, just kind of eyeball it. I could measure up six inches on this if I wanted to, and I'll see if I'm kind of close by eyeballing it. And yes, I'm right on it. So I'm just making sure the tops are within the edges. Let me test this side too, because I'm at an angle, so, yep, right on it. Maybe a touch up. Not a All right, and I'm just going to do the three spot nailing. Double check again. One, two, and three. And I'll do the same on this side. So that's all set. And I'll go back to the other end and add the next one. Let me move ya. And that's going to go on here. And I thought maybe I should clamp these together so they stay together. So I've got this clamp. This is an Irwin Quick Grip. 
and it will hopefully keep these together so they don't move when I pull the other side. So I got that good and snug. Kind of got this marked. Now I could pull the length from the top down again if I so wished, but right now I've got them lined up pretty evenly. So now I'm going to re-glue it. I had to wipe the glue off because I had to go do that and I was afraid it would dry. Glop of glue, glop of glue. And I'm going to line up this side and this side. And now it feels way too long. Oh, that's because this is, needs to be pulled out. All right, perfect. Let me pull the dimension. It's 22 and a half from the top. 22 and a half is where the bottom part should be. And 22 and a half, okay. Since this side is correct, I'm going to nail it first. So, line it up. I'm pretty sure that's 22 and a half. I keep having to check it. Yes, 22 and a half. So, I'll get this in here. At least get two of the nails in. This is kind of in the way of me. Well, I'll just do it this way with my left hand. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have to hold it like that and then nail it. It's still not going to be perfect. There's going to be little bows and what have you in it, and that's fine. We're just trying to get it semi-straighter. Semi and I'm going to do that on down. Let me do one more for you. Now, pulling that kind of pulled it out of kilter there. Okay, now it's doing good. And I probably will use another clamp. So, for the next one, 22 and a half and 22 and a half is 45, correct? So we will pull a measurement from the top to 45. And this is 45 right here. Do the same on the other side, which is hard because of the thing block being in the way. So I'm going to have to kind of eyeball it. Dang it. I have to pull that thing off and just, I'm making myself crazy here. So I pulled the measurement on that side and I pull the measurement on this side. 245. 45 is right there. I'm going to keep my finger there so I can grab my pen. And that is where I will put my pieces to be put on there. And I will put the clamp on here again to keep these sides fairly even. Oh, I did it the wrong way. Clamp on. It's probably painful for a second, guys. Don't mind. It's even bowed up and down, so. Kind of got it going both ways. So now it's kind of lined up both sides. 
and we will proceed to glue it. Daba glue, daba glue. And nail it. So let me see, where's the lines? There's that line, there's that line. Level up the edges. And nail it. I didn't rub it out. Okay, that's done. And now we'll move down to the next one. And it is basically 22 and a half from here. So I'm just gonna measure from there rather than from the top. 22 and a half. Set that there. 22 and a half. And then 22 and a half. Let's see how this one measures up. If it's out of bow or out of kilter. Now we're going to measure or line these up again. with the them relatively together. Looks like part of the big bow started right here, so this part's gonna be just as important to pull together. So here I've clamped it together again so that the two by twos relatively line up. And then I'm going to glue and nail, or brad nail. And this will make them relatively even. It's not going to be perfect because I'm noticing that it's bowing in the other direction too. So I'll have to make some adjustments when I add the side rungs. Okay, so that's. Basically done. Okay, so now we have all the rungs on our two ladder pieces. So now what you do is I will unclamp and unclamp and now I'm going to set these up on their sides. I'll pull that out. So you see here I clamped the actual two by two to all of them on each end so that these will not move. Okay, so now I've got them both up on the side. I told you I had them clamped down on each end. And now I'm gonna take my measurements. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the outside of this rung to the outside of this rung. And this one is 17 and an eighth. And that way when I make the cross piece or attach it, it will cover the ends of this cross piece of the ladder. And I'll do that measure, I'll measure that all the way up to the end since I know they are laid out properly and then I will cut two sets, one for the top and one for the bottom. And then once I attach these, I'll flip it over and I'll attach the other side. So I'll go make my, I'll take my measurements, go make my cuts, and then I'll be back to show you how I do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match the edges of these. So this one will feel flush to that one as I put them on, attach them. So. I will do it by feel and stretch or pull in as I need to. On these, I'm first going to do the top and then the, and the bottom, or the bottom and then the top. And then I will go into the center, towards the center, and line up things as I need to. So let me get my nail gun. And even then, it's not going to be perfect, but my last one stands straight. It's not tipsy-doodle. And 
Now I'm nailing into the 2x2 two two and not into the other 1x2. Well, I did that totally wrong. So I'm going to do one instead. Instead of the triangle, I did kind of a wonky doodle thing. But I matched the top of the 1x2s. Oh dear, did I? And then, no. I'm going to do it over this way. So I'm going to make top, match the top. And kind of hold it in place. Oh, see, it's not matching. So I'm going to hold this in a little bit. And I want the top corners basically to kind of match. Oh, did it wrong again. I was going to do the triangle pattern in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to do the top one. Use my glue, my nail gun. It's already getting toasty out here. I'm going to have to take off this flannel shirt. So I'm going to do the top. I attach the very bottom. And I'm going to attach the second one, the very top one the clamps are holding. Oh, no, I can do the tops. Sorry. Okay, so line this up. Let's do that. Glue. Glue. And I'm actually going to Pull it out a little bit to make it match. Oh, I don't need to. Oh, just a wee bit. So I'm going to pull this. And I have the corner, top corners matching of the rungs. Remember my triangle pattern. And I'll also put it through the rungs where it goes rung to rung. And this one, I'm going to pull it out to match. That's what I'm going to do. Match the top corner. Oh. Okay, that's into the wrong. So now I'm going to do my triangle pattern on this with these clamps in the way. It's a little difficult. So I may have to just work around them. All good. So there's that one. So now let's go to the next one down. Okay, so we have all the rungs attached on this side. And feel it, make sure they're all done. So I'm going to unclamp this end. I had to change my shirt if you're wondering. It just got too hot. This was like a gauzy material, even though it's black. Hopefully I'm not changing the sound here. Let's see. Now we're going to flip it over and attach to the other side. And let's see. That one matches good. So it goes on the top. It goes here. And we're doing good. Okay. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to work my way along and attach all these pieces. This one, okay, is, there, that'll work. Okay, so basically I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the other side. I'm just going to work my way and attach all of these rungs. And then I'll stand it up and show you the final result. 
You don't need to watch me nail it. It's exactly the same way. And if there's any that doesn't match exactly, I try to stretch or pull or whatever, just to kind of get these edges of the rungs lined up. They're not perfect. Some are off a little bit, eighth of an inch, etc. It all works. Once it's stood up, you'll never even really notice it. And you'll especially never notice it once it's covered with plants. So here they are side by side. And I can see where some of my measurements are a little bit off, but that's okay. They're not meant to be perfect. They're just meant to be usable. And they will be that. So there you have it. Your eight foot tall tomato obelisk supports or whatever you want. This would be work for roses, work for uh, morning glories, anything that climbs and or gets very, very tall. So here we are all done with our tomato obelisk. Yes, tomato support obelisk or whatever else. You can cl put climbing roses on it, sweet peas, um, cucumbers, anything that you like. And check out the blog, flowerpatchfarmhouse.com, where I have a couple other versions that I've done, even one that we turned into an arbor. It was really easy to build. And this, the materials are $20 or under. Very inexpensive to build. So if you want to get handy or get your handyman to do this for you, go ahead and build it. I don't think that came out right. But anyways, simple enough for a beginner woodworker or one that flakes it like me. So here are my two obelisks in place, and they have tomatoes at the base. Thinking of moving these, I love the height, etc. here, but I kind of want all of them to be the same height. It kind of puts my eye off having the original arbor I built several years ago right here being shorter, and I, I think that height is really good for the tomatoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a couple more at that height to put back here and these two that I these two eight foot ones are going to go out front and I have perfect spot for them and I will share that later but I wanted to show you um, what they look like out here in the garden after I got them done they've been treated with a deck stain that has, is an oil and will help protect the wood so they last much longer alrighty I'll see you in the next video